Welcome to this video on Stent Design. My name is Eric Smith. This video is presented by my company, Techna Incorporated. Please see us on the web at www.techna3d.com. The geometry shown here is for a generic, cylindrical, self-expanding metal stent. This video shows how to create a CAD model of this stent in just a few relatively simple steps using ProEngineer's toroidal bend feature. The method is directly applicable to other geometries. To create the model, a repeating pattern of basic cells was constructed. Another series of intermittent bridges connects the basic cells to each other. This creates a continuous solid model. Using relations, the model is set up so that the outer diameter of the stent can be parametrically varied between a minimum or a crimped state of 1.916 millimeters to any number of deployed diameters up to 8 millimeters. Let's take a closer look at the way the ProE model was created by inspecting key items in the feature tree. After using the default datums, a planar curve is generated using a sketch datum curve. This defines half the geometry of the basic cell. The next key feature is a simple mirroring to create the second or anti-symmetric half of the basic cell. Next a flat surface is generated referencing the curves of the basic cell. This surface is patterned in the x and y directions and these patterned surfaces are merged and thickened to produce a flat solid. After a bit of cleanup, the flat solid is rolled into a cylinder using the toroidal bend feature. Let's look at the toroidal bend feature in more detail using the edit definition function. Here we see the flat solid geometry being operated on the two planes that act as the boundaries the solid is rolled between and a preview of the toroidal bend in yellow. A sketch normal to the Y or theta direction is required for the feature definition. The X direction of the sketch coordinate, shown here, delineates the outer diameter or outer surface of the bend feature, while the sketched line describes a sort of neutral axis. Here is the flat solid feature that becomes the toroidal bend. Note that the ends of the solid that get rolled together need to match in the X or axial direction. This needs to be done to avoid producing discontinuities or seams in the toroidal bend. So going back to the beginning, I created a flat surface by using the edges of a previously sketched datum curve that defined the unit cell geometry. The fill surface could have been created in one step with its own independent sketch, this would have made the model tree even simpler. 
but I originally found it easier to keep track of the unit cell dimensions using a separate sketch feature, in this case a separate damp curve. Here is a sketch of the original damp curve. This defines one half of the unit cell. I tried to use as much symmetry in the sketch as possible to minimize the number of dimensions and that way better keep track of the unit cell's shape and also to simplify the sketch. You can see here how the edges of the edit fill surface are referenced by the sketch of datum curve. Flexing the dimension shows how easily the unit cell geometry is transformed between different values of the eventual outer diameter. And again, you can see how the edges of the flat surface follow the curve exactly. So the next step in the method is to pattern the unit cell surface in the x and y directions. With regards to creating patterns, I found that patterning the surface feature rather than patterning a solid feature led to much faster regeneration times for the model overall. Here you can see the individual members of the pattern in both the uh, y and the x direction. I patterned the flat surface in the x and y directions using the point pattern option. To use the point pattern option, you sketch a series of geometric points, and then an instance of the feature to be patterned is placed everywhere there is a geometric point. There are other patterning options available, but I found this one very useful and very flexible. Merging the surfaces into one quilt makes it easy to just solidify and thicken the quilt. Note that the y direction eventually becomes the theta direction, so it's very important that after being patterned, the y direction distance is equal to the outside diameter multiplied by the value of pi. Again, make sure that the horizontal edges match in the x or axial direction, or you'll end up with seams or unmatched edges in your toroidal bend later on. Well, that's about all there is to it. You create your basic cell and you pattern it, then roll it up into a cylinder. Here you can see I was able to apply the same method to an entirely different unit cell geometry with similar results. If you would like more information on this model, please visit my website to download a PowerPoint presentation that includes more detailed information on the dimensions and steps used in the models. And even much more information is available from the following web addresses. And it should be noted that the actual Pro Engineer model and the PowerPoint manual explaining the modeling steps in a bit more detail are also available for downloading from GitHub at https colon slash slash github slash techna 3 d If you have any questions or would like more information, you can email me at esmith at techna3d.com. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to visit my website at www.techna3d.com.